Welcome, Sanjeev. This is uh, just off this uh, area and event. I was just telling Sanjeev, it's been a long, long time since I haven't caught up with him. He and I have done an incredible amount of work together. Unfortunately, none of that uh, turned into a thousand x uh, or a ten thousand x uh, investment for me. But all of his actually have turned to gold. So he does uh, have the touch of gold for him. But you know, I have a way to describe what he does. So you know, a lot of people have ideas, but when you have an idea and you want to build. history and you want to change the world then i think instead of this being something a rapper would actually rap or sing about it's a good tagline for the man i'm going to introduce right now it's incredible what all he's been able to achieve he started off as a person you know i think now we'll talk to him about this entire thing but the way he's actually pivoted from what he was doing to what he was doing in between to what he's doing now i think is fantastic and in every which way i think is a true moonshot of every single kind so sanjeev thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for making this happen i've already said that this is my catch up with sanjeev but i'd like to tell everybody in the audience it's a very very rare moment that you get to actually be able to speak to and also get to go into the mind of a person like sanjeev bikchandani so i would say and i would really encourage all of you to send in all your questions the last fireside chat that i did with sudeep bhatia lots of you sent in your questions i was a little slow to react because we were having such an amazing conversation i would really really suggest that you send in your questions quick and fast and i'll try and include them let's keep it as interactive as possible so let's get started with uh, you know just introducing the fact that i call him a soothsayer pioneer startup godfather uh so sanjeev can we start by finding out how you're doing and the fact that uh, zomato didn't just deliver food to you delivered a 1000x return so uh, let's start from that one uh what did you like about zomato when it was a small little idea i'd like to really understand what do you see in these companies that you bet and bet right Well, um, we like to go in early, and uh, we look for a few things. You know, which uh, first of all, we you know we don't do it top down. We don't identify a sector and say let's find companies in automobile classifieds or this or that. We just meet all startups. So let's say in a we have a team. Let's say in a day that team meets about seven, eight, nine, ten startups. So in a quarter you're meeting about a few hundred, and then you invest in one or two or three, right? Uh, and what do we look for when we meet the startups? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first thing is we look for some evidence that the customer will want, or the customer already wants what this company is doing, right? So this could be you know some traffic is coming without marketing, and the traffic is growing. This could be some sales are happening. This could be whatever, but some evidence that it's solving an unsolved problem. Customers want what it's doing, and they like it, or perhaps they will like it. Some evidence of that. After no. the team, we look at the team and say, "What is the quality of this team?" Now, very often these are entrepreneurs in the late twenties and early thirties, right? And you, they are running small organizations, and you're going to take a bet. And how will this person be or this team be five years out when they have a few hundred people working in the company? Can they manage a large organization? Uh, will they have good people skills? Are, are they the sort who will be able to attract talent? Uh, will they treat minority shareholders well? What are their ideas on? Uh, what is good governance and so on and so forth uh then you look at competition you look at is there a moat or can a moat be built you look at potential market size and all those things but you know typically the most important thing is the people and is it solving an unsolved problem do customers want what they do if you've got these two things right then you know the rest uh, uh, should fall into place Well, Sanjeev, you know what you've told me uh, is a discussion you and me have had many times, and you know many times when I speak to a VC or an investor, they tell me these things. But you seem to be doing way better. Your hit rate must be way, way better than most. There has to be a certain secret sauce. Are you very good with people? Do you gauge people's minds better? Are you a person that is a people's person, so therefore you're able to get that thing about the team right? Have you ever sat down one day? I mean, does do you have these moments where you sit down and say, "Acha Sanjeev, I'm going to think about myself right now and say, why am I getting more rights than wrongs? Is there a secret sauce?" But so I think the other thing about us is that we are patient capital. So we invested in Zomato in 2010. It's 2021. We are still shareholders, right? Now in India, if you you know if you get into a good company, you may have to ride it out for a long, long time because you know from First check to IPO is ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen years. Now, if you're running an eight-year fund or a nine-year fund, you begin to get anxious by the sixth or seventh year. 
uh, that listen, I need an exit. Mm-hmm. And if I look at the real uh, sort of uh, a lot of the value accretion in Zomato, in our, the value of our investment has come in the last two or three years. Right. So perhaps these eight-year funds, these nine-year funds are too, a little too short for India if you want to go in as the first check, uh, simply because it takes a long time to, uh, for, for companies to come to fruition. Uh, mm-hmm. So I would say I don't think we are smarter than the others necessarily. But uh, we've been kind of fortunate, lucky. We have been entrepreneurs ourselves, so perhaps we can sort of see some stuff which others who haven't had entrepreneurial experience see, or can perhaps see a little later. Uh, I think we have the luxury of investing from our balance sheet, so we are able to be patient. Uh, we have been through it ourselves, so we don't sort of panic right. too easily and you know don't look for exits too easily, and it's okay. Right. Okay. Well, of course, uh, when, you, when you're being humble enough to talk about luck and hope, luck and hope is the factor maybe in one or two, but not the gold run that you're having. So, I, you know, I was having a conversation with Sabir Bhatia around two hours back and uh, Sabir said something very interesting. And I've heard this him saying this before he said it on a show of mine also earlier that he seems to think that the one of the problems that continues in India is that uh, we're still not being able to do things first, as in most of the success that India has seen has also been a little bit of a copycat mentality of something that has happened and has done well abroad, brought to India, Indianized for a very, very large Indian audience, and therefore it's been successful. And he was a little skeptical that this will continue. Do you still also think this way or is he right? Is he wrong? Well, actually, if you look at uh, some of the ideas that have worked in India, they have not been copied from the West. Maybe there are similar ideas in the West, but the inspiration has been original in India. So mm-hmm. if you look at uh, Zomato, Dipin uh, did not copy a similar model in the West. He observed his prospective customers. He figured out that, look, if I aggregate all the menu cards of restaurants in and around Delhi and CR, uh, you know, I will get traffic. And he got this insight by observing customers. So you know, it was an original idea, even though there may have been similar sites in the West, but his inspiration was not the West. His inspiration was the Indian consumer. Likewise mm-hmm. for Nokri. There were other job sites around the world before that, but I had not seen them. Uh, okay. I got the idea by observing prospective users. So, you know, there are several ideas which may look like they've been copied, but they actually haven't been copied. They have been inspired by observing the customer, the prospective consumer. And they have ended up being somewhat similar to ideas in the West, but they have not been common. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about one thing that everybody's super interested in right now. It's it's like, you know, this is locker room conversation, coffee table conversation around the water cooler conversation. And that is startups going public. It's, it's, it's this craze. I mean, I can't have a, I used to be the guy where I used to be like the only questions asked of me are, uh, you know, which phone are you buying, which TV are you buying, which laptop are you Now people just say, now which startup is public share and can you get me some in out there? What's the euphoria? Why around startups? Why is the public going crazy about it? Why are valuations sky high? Why are people so interested and why now? I think uh, what is happening is that the effort and hard work of the last decade or so, when many of these startups were founded in the last 10 years and some are not 10 years old, some are five, seven years old, you know, some are even older than 10 years. Mm-hmm. I think the, the efforts of a decade have come to fruition now where startups have reached a certain size and scale, where uh, investors in the public markets have an appetite for, uh, for, their, for, for their shares, where uh, the market is willing to accept them going public, right? Um, and all these things have come together, and not just in India, but overseas. I think global uh, markets, uh, equity markets are booming. That mm-hmm. helps. So, so all this has happened. It, it's, a, it's a kind of concatenation of circumstances which has come together. Okay. And, and you think valuations are pretty much on the dot or is it just that same they problem can, that we look, have? In- the market is frothy. No two ways about it. Yeah, but correct. so long as the underlying company is got showing underlying good fundamental and growth, real issue is growth. As long as it's headed in the right direction and it's headed at a good clip, Mm-hmm. Uh, even if the market corrects, you know, this company will grow into the valuation over two, three years. So it's not, the business is real. These businesses are not vaporware. Uh, so if you look at the 2000 meltdown, that time there were only 4 million internet users in the country. Now oh. there are several hundred million. Now these companies are doing real business. I think now, uh, you know, transactions are happening. Smartphones are real. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so therefore, I think the 
internet economy is real now. Now you can argue that this is overvalued by twenty percent or thirty percent, and right. it should be lower. But look, in one year's time, twenty percent growth will will fix that. Okay. Now, fairly controversially, and you know that's pretty much uh, you, Sanjeev. Uh, you don't uh, mince your words. You actually made a headline. In fact, I, when I read the headline, I had a big smile on my face that this is going to really churn up things. You said that startups going public right now will hit profits in two to three years. What is that based on? Numbers, vision, or hope? No. Look, if I'm, I what I said was that the startups where I have data, and I don't have data for all startups, okay. tells me that. Uh, There's, there is a path to profit, visibility of profit in the next two to three years. Experts I've spoken to have also told me that listen, you know, if a startup comes and say, "Hey, we'll make profit for ten years," you know, public market investors will get a little wary. Yeah. Right. And therefore, public market investors are acceptable uh, are accepting loss-making startups going public, but it's not as if that they have an infinite runway of making losses. They want to see profit in the next few years. and therefore you know i have also said that public markets impose commercial prudence and discipline and therefore these startups will already know it that look we'll have to conform to the expectations we have to meet those expectations if we want our valuations to stay intact and perhaps grow and and that's part of going public okay which brings me to my next question going public is great unlocks your value great for you but is it the right thing for all these startups to aim for i've seen startups completely collapse under the weight of post ipo you know uh, changes and expectations and everything that you also spoke about that they are aware of this but are they really i mean they've done this for the last 10 12 years in a very different environment in a very in in, in a kind of a self vacuum of risk and you know doing amazing amazing things now they come into a completely different spotlight where expectations and you know profitability and getting the right numbers and doing it every quarter and all of these comes in and i've seen very good people in very few good companies completely collapse under that weight so should every startup really be looking for no, an ipo i i you are absolutely right i mean look uh, a good ipo a good company that's capable of going public when it goes public is a great thing Mm-hmm. A company goes public uh, when it should not go public. A company that goes public prematurely uh, may not be such a great thing. So I think it's important for every startup founder who has ambition of going public, saying, "Is this the right time? Am I ready for it?" Okay. Right. Uh, and you see, going public is a oh, pretty much a one-way street. You know, you can't go public tomorrow, today, and go private tomorrow. Okay. Right. which means that you've got to be prepared for the long haul you got to be prepared for quarterly conference call and its reports disclosures uh, a public market microscope uh, perhaps a uh, much much more stringent levels of compliance uh, much more onerous compliances uh, because now you're taking public money right all those things uh, which mm-hmm. means beefing up your internal processes your teams on compliance finance legal secretary uh, it means putting in erps it means putting a whole bunch of things right right uh and it means uh you know perhaps being answerable to people whom you were not answerable to earlier why does the same time running the business growing the business mm-hmm. right uh so you got to be ready for it and be prepared for it now i know i remember when we went public uh, we began to talk about it in feb 2005 we eventually ended up going public in october 2006 it took oh. us uh, you know uh, maybe 18 20 months to go public and that those 18 20 months we prepared we beefed up the staffing uh, in finance in legal in secretarial in operations we got in uh, you know more robust and rigorous audit systems we we got in uh, you know a, a, a commitment to go towards uh, you know we had got an in home grown in house erp system mm-hmm. uh, we had to mi- commit to migrate to a, a industry standard external third party erp system and erp is not not easy to implement right right so so you have to do a whole bunch of things before you are able to go public right okay. so it's an effort right. okay so now talking about you and your organization the pandemic the pandemic hasn't slowed you down at all rather i think it's accelerated something from within you uh, from what i hear you invested nearly into two to three startups every month in 2021 and you did you had a really great hit rate also in 2020 in terms of investing so why what are you seeing that others aren't seeing because there's quite a slow down otherwise but you seem to be investing very quickly very fast are you seeing better opportunities that others aren't So I think the deal flow in the last uh, two or three years has been um, really great in India. 
there are a whole bunch of really high quality entrepreneurs and founders starting up uh, and trying to do things. I think uh, as the economy digitizes and with work from home, remote working, uh, the economy has accelerated digitization. And, and therefore, a lot of these companies are getting traction that they were not getting earlier, okay. right? Or perhaps more than they were getting earlier. And therefore, we see opportunities. And uh, if we like something, uh, we, we back it. Okay. But you're not, you're not seeing opportunities that you're saying, the digitization and work from home, everybody's getting more familiar with it. But, but you're, not getting, you're not getting to see things that you weren't seeing before. You're just seeing an acceleration in what you were anyway expecting, right? No, I think there's a substantial amount of innovation that's happening. Uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and that's been going on. It's not as if it started suddenly. But mm -hmm. we have been seeing over the last several years, there look a lot of it. And, and there's been a lot of developments in the environment which have, which have sort of done this, whether it's... Uh, you know, the, the, the UPI interface, uh, the, 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 the health tech stack that's coming in. You know, so I think in fintech and health tech, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of stuff will be happening which wasn't happening earlier. Okay. All right. So, uh, Sanjeev, you've seen a lot of things happening. You know, the startup boom, the dot-com collapse, the India story, which was great, not so great, then again great. Now, digital India. Where are we now and where will we be in two years? What, what, how would you describe our current state of where we are with this part of the world? So I think, look, uh, the startup economy is really booming. There's a lot of capital coming in, a lot of startups are trying, a lot of startups are scaling, right? A lot of value creation is happening. A lot of startups, which were, you know, come and stop it five or 10 years ago, or 15 years ago, are now going public. So I think this part of the economy is really, really uh, seeing a lot of action. It's booming a lot. Uh, and I think, uh, so I, I mean, I finished college in 1984 from Delhi University. And if I look back on what the economy was like then, right, there was a 17 year waiting list to get a Bajaj scooter. There was an eight year waiting list to get a telephone line, landline. There were no mobile phones. There was uh, one news channel, there was one TV channel, Doodarshan. Uh, color TV had only just come in uh, two mm -hmm. years before that. Right? There was an eight year waiting list for a gas cylinder. Right? And I look and I look at it now, and uh, it's a complete sea change, but it didn't, have, it didn't happen overnight. Right? It's when I look, take a point to point comparison of 37 years ago and now, I see the change. Right? Uh, so, what's going to happen in the next 10 years? Look, I don't know year on year or month on month, but I do know that. Uh, th things will be very, very different, right? Uh, if you look at the industries that have created buzz, employment, growth in the last 20 years or 30 years, right? They did not exist in the 80s. IT services, mm -hmm. internet, mobile telephony, mobile apps, uh, you know, other tech companies, uh, private airlines, private sector insurance companies, private sector banks, uh, you know, they, they uh, organized retail, e-commerce, none of this ex existed. So what we've seen in India, it may, have, it may be, we don't see it day to day, but when you look back on it and you measure and you say, hey, hold it, guys, what was it like 20 years ago? It was very different. What will it be like 10 years from now? It will be very different. I, what exactly will happen? I do not know and I cannot say, but it will be different. The pace of change is accelerated. Okay. I, very interesting. I think um, the the the... You know, there are memes now, which was, which actually has something called before and how it's going. And I think you've painted a very, very good uh, meme picture of before and how it's going right now. But, you know, this also reminds me of something else um, in a conversation I was having with uh, Kiran uh, Mazumdar Shaw. She said something very interesting. She said that VCs and investors in India don't understand high science. Thus, they don't invest in things like bioscience. And that's now our greatest problem right now. So do you agree? Have you invested in anything like, you know, bioscience or the medical field so post the pandemic? So we've got a of capital uh, from our balance sheet, which we are looking at technologies of day after tomorrow. Okay. But these are small bets, which frankly, we are still learning, right? We don't know enough about those, those areas and fields. So we co-invest with others and we put in small tickets, right? Okay. Uh, but this is where, uh, you know, tech VC was 20 years ago. So it's, yeah, right now it's not there, but will it happen tomorrow? Answer, my, my bet is yes, it will. Okay. Right? Yeah, because, but, uh, you, you, yeah, sure. Carry but, on. The, but the truth also is that, look, um, a lot of the cutting edge innovation also does not take place in India. A lot of it. It takes place 
in the US, in Japan, in China, some in Europe, right? Uh, so for example, if you look at data science, or you look at biotech, mm -hmm. there are actually very, very few companies that are doing real cutting edge stuff. Right. Now, it's a chicken and egg. You may say, look, there's no capital, they can't do it, and they say, if they're not doing it, how can you fund them? There's a chicken and egg, right? Mm -hmm. but, but I guess it'll get sorted out in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the next 10 or 15 years. Yeah, but companies like Moderna and others are good examples for VCs. Uh, you know, just uh, prior to the pandemic and everything else, Moderna was what valued at about a billion dollars. It's worth two hundred billion dollars now, and uh, so I, I know you're supposed to have only one of these kind, but I think there'll be more Modernas now, and I think it's investors and VCs that will wake up to that opportunity. Now, Sajeev, something very important that I want to talk to you about, it said that the single greatest problem with a startup now, because everything has matured, startups that present to a VC are getting to be more mature, are more smart. So the greatest problem with the startup now is getting a VC to invest is that the VC now expects to uh, you to grow at an alarming rate, world domination or nothing less. Is there no room for a great company to grow to the right size and not become a mega speed unicorn because now VCs just expect that 100x, 200x, IPO, you know, everything these are, really, really fast. I think these are all symptoms of excessive liquidity and capital. Okay. And when the Fed pumped in $4 trillion into the mm -hmm. US economy and this found its way all over the world, including some in India, right. you saw, you, we've seen asset price inflation everywhere. Absolutely. Public markets, private markets. Uh, expectation of speed. The next round happening a high valuation and a high valuation, a high valuation, and within months. Uh, I do think that this will continue as long as there's this kind of liquidity. But tomorrow, if liquidity dries up a bit, you will see more rationality coming in. Okay, but uh, I'm not really going to see that for, for for a while right now because this there's still so much of money in the system, and we're that seeing that. Well, all, especially all with China, yeah. China falling out of favor with uh, Western yeah. investors, you know, the money has to go somewhere. And a lot of it is finding its way to India. It's coming in out here. Yeah. Okay, now this, this is a question that I'm starting to get in from a lot of people. So this is a follow-up question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, so what's new when you look for a company? We started off by talking about, you know, this is what you look for in a company. But almost everything you said was more or less what we've heard over the years. Uh, now, the ones that you know, you know these, these things now. Is there anything new that you'd like to tell companies that are just startups, people that are listening to you right now who are, have a great idea about to get into a startup, maybe bootstrapping themselves right now? Is there anything new now that they could do that you could look for? Well, because you, you just gave some amazing statistics like, you know, your team looks at 10, 12 a day. That's about, you know, two, three hundred a month and you get to invest with one or two. Is there anything the one or two do different? Because I think everybody is good at presenting now, right? Yeah. So look, we look at uh, a lot at uh, how defensible and unique this idea is. We look at uh, the solving unsolved problem. Right? Those are the fundamental principles, right? Okay. Uh, and uh, we look at competition. Is there an established incumbent already in the same space? Uh, and the, so, the, so the fundamental principles have not changed. Okay. The startups may be doing different things. But the questions are the same that we seek answers to. Okay. All right. That has not changed. Okay. Now, which, which is good. You know, I, I was actually scared that I'm going to get a new mantra now that oh, just stop. completely, you know, just <laughs> another 360 degree. Okay. No, no. Now we look for X <laughs> and Y over the, the typical, and which is the scary part because fundamentally everything should remain the same because the questions you were asking before were the right questions. That's what really matters. No, the question is. Huh? Yeah, there the is thank God changed. for that. Thank, thank God for that. So, Sanjeev, I'm going to do a little bit of a quick fire. You know, I enjoy doing quick fires. I've, we've done this before. I've done this on shows with you. I've done this on panels with you. So, the first one that I want to know from you is that now they say every super successful person has something called a morning routine. You know, some wake up at 4 a.m., some do, I have to sweat first thing so that my brain goes into high gear. Some do meditation, some do journaling, some have some really weird things that do with coffee and ghee and butter and all other things. What is Sanjeev Bhikchandani's <laughs> morning routine? Uh, well, I don't have one actually, but uh, if I were to look for a routine, I'd say it's a morning coffee. And uh, okay. right now it's a cold brew. When okay. it gets to winter, it'll be a hot brew, but right now it's cold brew. 
but but that's pretty much it there is nothing else that you do that elevates you into the status of gods and everything no, else right because no, no, i'm just no, surprised no. that everybody i ask this question your maybe uh maybe the 25th or 26th person i may have asked this year and you're the first one to say i don't have a morning routine i don't have a morning routine honestly <laughs> i wake up okay. i can wake up anytime between, between 6 and 8 there's oh. no fixed time but but the first thing i do is else that you do immediately okay the first thing i do is uh, let the dog out okay okay. <laughs> okay the second thing i do is i have a cup of coffee okay so listen everybody who's out there this is the routine that sanjeev dikchandani has so if you do wake up in the morning you don't have a dog first go get a dog for yourself then let the dog out <laughs> and that pretty much is the morning routine you need for great success in the startup business sanjeev if you could go back to have a conversation with your 20 year old self let's say what would be the one piece of advice you would give yourself the 20 year old and i want one which is a professional advice and one a relationship advice well uh, they may, they both may be the same actually and okay. you got to focus on being really good at working with people okay now i did become better at working with people over the years uh, and when i passed out of college i certainly wasn't right uh but but having said that uh, you know uh, it's what really will hold you in good stead both in your personal life and your professional life okay great so great advice and i i i i'm sure your 20 year old self would have really benefited but i think <laughs> i can't really imagine you any different because from the time i've known you this is how i've known you oh, no, 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 no. i was very person. awkward i was very awkward you know dealing with people work you know making uh, uh, a public speaking making a presentation and you know all those things were Well, but I mean, it, it took me several years to sort of become good at that. Isn't that sad? Really, the fact that we don't have the kind of media available that is available to this generation. I think I would have loved to have seen, you know, you videos of you that your friends had taken because they put it on Instagram, because they put it on Twitter, they put it on Facebook. We just didn't have that generation where we were documented from the time we were born. This generation maybe that's a, maybe has that. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a good thing, Rajiv. We had much less pressure. I got know. much more time. I, I, I would have loved. Would, wouldn't you have loved to see your grandfather, your grandmom, and they were ten, eleven, fifteen, in and not in an environment which is just a black and white picture, but something where they were actually being themselves? I would give anything to actually get a well, glimpse into that I mean, life. My, my, for my parents and grandparents, answer is yes. <laughs> but for myself, yeah. I'm not so sure. <laughs> that was pretty awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay no i would have loved to see you awkward that's what i'm saying i i would give anything for that right now so <laughs> you've spoken about uh, quite a few things that you've changed but again what's the wisdom of the years that have taught you something different um, something that you today know you wish you had known a long time back you know uh when you're young you're impatient right and mm-hmm. i used to have seniors in the organization who would you know say just relax you know it'll happen do your work be committed work hard but you know uh, don't be crazy impatient for success it'll happen right um, and it took a few decades but it did happen okay and that's the advice i'll uh, give every young person that keep working keep working stay committed stay focused but don't expect instant success it no no great company no great thing was achieved in anything less than 10 or 15 years okay tough though for this generation patience is one of the things that uh, i don't see at all because you know there's a song by billy joel uh, called vienna waits for you vienna right okay okay and that's a song i would uh, advise every young person to listen to oh, i i thought you were going to say that's a song i'm going to sing for all of you no, right now no i can't sing to say my life <laughs> but, but but you know that's a song i i advise every young person to listen to and i used to listen to it a lot when i was struggling as an entrepreneur or when i was in my first job and impatient uh you know but but the but the lyrics really have meaning for me okay so 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 again for everybody who's watching this do take a look at both the lyrics and do hear the song it is actually a great song and i think pretty much a lesson of life that is out there so you spoke about a song i want to really know this because i think uh, the greatest knowledge that we have is is in books and sometimes even in movies that we actually watch so is there a book that changed your life a movie that everyone should watch that you would recommend to people you know uh, i won't say a book changed my life but uh, there are uh, there's a couple of books by the same author uh, you know built to last and good to great 
Okay. Now these are not new books. You know, Collins. Twenty, twenty years old. Yeah, Collins. Mm-hmm. Right. But there, there's a very good concept that look, what is it that A makes a company last a long time, and B, what is it that differentiates a great company from a merely good company? Right. And one of the concepts he comes across, he puts out, is the hedgehog concept. That companies start off small and they drift and they dabble and they do many different things, and then eventually the good ones discover what their real purpose is. That this is my real purpose, and then it's like a hedgehog. You're just sitting still, just focused on your main purpose. Okay. Right. And I would say that's what happened to us. For the first seven years, I drifted and did a whole bunch of small things. I quit my job in 1990, and until 1997, I was drifting. 97, we launched Nokri as, I had done 20 small things by then, whatever idea, whatever came my way to survive. Nokri was the 21st small thing. And by 98, I figured that, hey, this is it. Okay. And then we said, okay, we are an internet company. And that's what we focused on. So I would urge everybody to at least glance at these two books, Built to Last and Good to Wait. Right. No, great, great choices. Um, classics, but absolutely and totally on the money in every which way, because I think uh, the classic rules will always apply. Newfangled stuff will come in, but the classic and like I said, things that have never changed can will actually outlast time itself. So Sanjeev, uh, you, you've achieved a lot. You know, there are, I, I sometimes read about you and because I know you personally, I sometimes read about you and, you know, some of the taglines for you have dramatically changed uh, a few years back, you used to be, you know, described in very different ways. Now, like I said, uh, that line that I took, uh, sage and prophet and godfather of internet wo, startups. Wo, wo, umar ki baat hai. I'm now 58. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years ago, I was in my 40s. 20 years ago, I was in my 30s. Nahi, wo hai, but I'm just saying that, you know, it's, it's how people perceive you. It's how, how people are actually looking at you. But you've achieved so much already. What's the one thing now? that you still want to achieve in life? Because it's around this time that perspectives change, objectives change. You're doing what you're doing. You're great at it. You're really enjoying yourself now. But then some larger purposes come in. So is there something more that Sanjeev Bikchandani wants to no, achieve my, in his lifetime? My, my, my methods, my, uh, you know, uh, what I want to do and how I've been doing it have not changed in the last 20 years. Which is, look, build institutions, create leaders, delegate handover. Right, uh, and which is what uh, you know I've been trying to. Now, it, you if you build one institution every ten years and hand over, that's a big achievement, right? Right. Uh, so, I stepped aside as CEO of InfoEdge in two thousand ten, but at the same time, I was a, became a co-founder at Ashoka. That is not a full time thing for me; it's uh, something I'm supporting outside. I think that's come along nicely. I think we are now looking at an investing firm, InfoEdge Ventures, just over, over the last ten years has come a long way. There also, I want to sort of hand over the keys at some point in time. Mm-hmm. So I would rather build institutions and hand over than, uh, you know, so A, you have to build institutions. It's not an opportunity to see that you make money today. You build institutions. Okay. Uh, institutions are sustainable. They're viable. They're impactful. They're doing something useful and they're profitable. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you hand over and build the next one. Okay. So is there, is there still an overall objective, something, these, these are things what you've been doing for 20 years. Is there an overall objective that you still want to achieve in life? No, I would, I mean, it's more of the same actually. Yeah. Every day is a, every day is a new day and you've got new challenges and uh, Baki, you look back and see, okay, and you know, if, huh. if you've done something good, then you're happy. Great. So, so my last question is my favorite question that I think I've asked you before also, but I want to see if it's changed. I asked you this many years back. You have so many of these institutions that you've built. Of course, Nokri has to be by far, you know, your closest because that's where everything got started. But now you've done so much with so many different people. Is there a favorite? Look, obviously, Nokri is the one that is the foundation for everything. Right? Because no, see, Nokri is the one that made the money that enabled us to go public that provided the funding for everything else. Right. Right. And still remains dominant market leader. Now I have not been involved in Nokri for the last 10 years in terms of operationally, okay. but it still remains obviously, you know, the first one 
and therefore the favorite. And also, it's it's pivotal to everything else you do. Without knocking, there's nothing else. Right. Absolutely. So your answer hasn't changed at all. This is pretty much what you said before, and pretty much obviously what you feel very, very strongly. I just wanted to know so many different things, so much more success. Has anything changed in the favorite part of it? But I knew Nokri will remain right out there. Sanjeev, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've been given three warnings of sorry running late. I've been ignoring them because I wanted to do this part with you. It's always such an amazing time that I have that I spend time with you. I always go back with, you know, I'm supposed to be moderating, but I go back with um, knowledge and education. So I, I come in as a moderator, but I go as a student. So thank you so much for speaking yeah, with thanks, us. Thank you thanks so much for nice talking putting this all out there. Thank you so much, everybody uh, that put it together. And uh, that's pretty much it from my side. Thank you. And see thank you. Bye-bye.